here on CBS Sports HQ. And the Arizona Wildcats go down the Purdue Boilermakers. Upset number one. That's their first victory over a number one team since 2000, 23 years ago. And guess who was the victim of that defeat? Arizona as well on November 25th. It was a balanced attack for this Purdue team. Fletcher Lawyer went off, Braden Smith, Zach Eady. They made the key shots down the stretch and also some great defensive plays as the Purdue Boilermakers are looking like one of the best teams in the country. Back here on CBS Sports HQ, presented by Belford, the leading disaster recovery partner for businesses and communities. We're joined by CBS Sports College Hoops analyst and insider Matt Norlander reacting to Purdue getting a huge win over Arizona. There were times where we thought Purdue make lose it, right? But then they rallied together. They showed that experience. How big is this, Matt, for their resume as a whole, understanding how they've been looked at kind of not not too kindly based on how they've done in the tournament. Right, so so much about Purdue comes down to tournament and what they're, they are gonna be and what, what expectations are there in. And we will see, listen, I'm willing to have that discussion, but right now, as we get to the middle of December, Purdue has the strongest resume of anyone in all of men's college basketball. And I believe that Purdue is on a fast track now to get a number one seed, potentially the number one overall seed on Selection Sunday in three months. And when we get to that point, I think this win that we saw on Saturday in Indianapolis is going to be the biggest reason why. You don't get a one seed based on just one or two or three big uh, big wins, but uh, it's, a, it's an accumulation. To me, the biggest piece in that puzzle was how Purdue was able to do this and get so much help around Zach Eady. Extremely impressive and a, and a wonderful thing for the sport, Chris, that we had this kind of a matchup here that really lived up to most of the hype. No, it didn't come down to the final couple of possessions. Arizona did push, but uh, a huge, a loud statement for Purdue, which is going to hopefully in their eyes get to the top of the polls but we'll have to wait and see on that on Monday right now when you look at Arizona this is I don't think this is a cause for concern right they played really well I think Purdue just you know outhandled them early in that first half they couldn't miss from three-point land Caleb Love was great Keisha Johnson what did they have to do to make sure they're staying with the contenders as the season progresses because at this point you know they beat Duke early on I think Duke was a little bit highly rated or overrated coming into the year uh, but this is one of their first tests of the season and they didn't get the W but they didn't look outmatched they didn't look outmatched and listen <laughs> In the immediacy of a game like this, you know, Arizona wasn't able to come out on top. And so it's, so it's, it's natural and okay to say, okay, what, what about this team uh, came up short? You know, are there any signs here that might be lingering, Chris, as we get further in the season? I personally don't think so. Arizona shot 52% from the floor, 38% from three-point range, hit 14 of its 16 three-pointers. The turnovers weren't, weren't great, but you know what? They equal Purdue's 13 apiece, and they did a decent job with points in the paint, equaling Purdue 40 to 40. It, uh, so many things things about both of these teams and how they play really match up uh, relatively equal. I think that we're going to get to uh, Selection Sunday and Arizona is going to be uh, having a healthy shot at also getting a one seed. Uh, I, I would love to say that we could potentially see these teams face off each other again, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to harp on this particular point. Caleb Love showing up the way that he did in this game, and he has been, he really has been a game changer for Arizona this season after having a highly criticized campaign last season with North Carolina. He sought a transfer to Michigan. Uh, some academic restrictions prevented that, and now it's actually worked out for him for the better, Chris, because without Caleb Love, I'm not convinced that Arizona only has one loss on the ledger here. Plenty of, of upside and potential for Arizona as well. Uh, I wouldn't take too much from them losing this effort. To me, the game was more about how Purdue won than Arizona losing. Right, and that happens. You're not going to be able to win every game. It doesn't mean you played poorly. It just means the other team, it was their night on that day. Now, earlier in the day, Kansas goes into Assembly Hall. They had never won before there, Matt. They beat Indiana in a close one. They're number two. So Purdue beats the number one team. When the polls come out, who was going to be the number one team, man? All right, so there might, we have two different uh, answers here. So who is going to be number one? I'll predict right now that it's going to be Kansas. And I'm only saying Kansas because I'm trying to project uh, voter behavior. Kansas is number two. It got a win in a competitive game against Indiana. Indiana wasn't ranked, but Kansas has a lot of good stuff on the resume. If it was me, 
I would put Purdue number one because to this point, there is not an argument against who has the best resume in college hoops right now. It is Purdue by nature of going and playing in the Maui Invitational, which was not just the best MTE field we've seen so far this season in college hoops. It was the best collection of teams we've ever seen from an MTE. So right now, Purdue has wins over Gonzaga, Tennessee, Marquette, Alabama, and Arizona. That's five top 25 level kind of wins. No other team can compete with that. Kansas, conversely, right now has three top 20. It's got a good resume, and it's a strong, strong number two. But I would give it to Purdue. My prediction, though, is that Kansas might narrowly uh, outpace it. But it, it does lead for a little bit of rare drama, Chris, going into a poll refresh on a Monday in December that we don't usually get. And we like that. We like yeah, drama yeah. and chaos yeah. in December. Now, when you look at Arizona and Purdue, do you envision we might see these teams in the Final Four when it's all said and done? I know a lot has to happen, but the way they played so far, it looks like it's certainly possible. I think there's a decent chance of this. Now, it's going to still be hard. Even when you get to a, an assembled field and you're looking at the ones and twos and threes in every region, last, last year, I'll remind our viewers, a one seed didn't make the Final Four, a two seed didn't make the Final Four, and a three seed didn't make the Final Four. It was the first time that had ever happened in the history of the tournament. However, I think there's a healthy chance that we could see both Purdue and Arizona make it back this year's Final Four. Oh, by the way, is in Arizona's backyard. It's going to be in Glendale, uh, just about a two, two and a half hour drive north of Tucson there. Uh, but I was saying it in our green room here at the HQ studios as I was watching this game. Uh, I'm pretty confident that at least one of these two teams, because they have so much there, the coaching is incredible, terrific guard play. Edie is the runaway favorite for National Player of the Year. Uh, I'm going to bank on that one of these two teams will break through. And so we'll get at least one, and there's a healthy chance that we'll see both of them. I would not fight it whatsoever, be it, Chris, in a national semi or the title game that uh, that tip on Monday in April that we have these two teams facing off again. I think that would be a great thing. For yeah, them. I think everybody would sign up for that um, and a lot of great players in this game for Purdue so it's time now for the player of the game presented by Belfour Matt there are a lot of different ways you could go with this one Purdue because it wasn't just a one-man show who is your player of the game here? All right, so I'm going to give you Fletcher Laurie, and here's the, here's the reason why. Now, there was, a, there was a point there where Purdue was relying on Edie late, and that was, that was big. But Lawyer showing up in this kind of game, 27 points, three assists, hit five of nine from three-point range, 11 of 18 overall, played 36 minutes. Braden Smith was also tremendous. Between Edie, Smith, and Lawyer, 75 of Purdue's 92 points came from, from that trio. But if you're going to tell me that in big-time moments, Lawyer is going to step up like this, I think it's a major development element for Purdue. For the uh, Purdue haters that are out there, in addition to the people that are just following the sport and are aware of these things, remember it was Smith and Lawyer who really cratered in that stunning upset to FDU in the first round of last season's NCAA tournament. I think those days are past those guys. We've seen it time and time again. Like Braden Smith right now is a top 20 player in the sport. But to me, Lawyer stepping up, and if you watch the, like he was ready for the moment for him to be such a huge supplemental piece. On a day, Chris, where we saw so many players step up and play well, I thought Lawyer's performance was the most important important one on either side of the floor. Definitely really high key for him. I, you could easily go, as you said, with Braden Smith. He came into the game averaging 13 points. He scores 26, so he is just raising his level of play. But once again, the Purdue Boilermakers get their first win over a number one team since 2000. That's Matt Nor Norlander, always fresh with the inside, baby. Thank you. And for more from Matt, you're going to want to check out the Eye on College Basketball podcast. Matt and Gary Parrish will have a special episode right here Saturday night, recapping all the madness from the day that was the Eye on College Basketball podcast is available wherever you get your podcasts.